gone. <laughs> now I believe you can hear me much better. Thank you so much for uh, allowing me to be a part of this Bible study. You know, any time a Bible study is given, there's just so much in, uh, in, in the Bible studies that's given because it's full of the word that it's really hard to like highlight uh, any one part because it's just full of good things. It's a river. It's a river. God's word is a river. And so um, I, I, I do want to say, though, that there was something that stuck out to me as I was reading just the first part. Um, so let me just read this this first paragraph here, talking about the book of Hebrews, chapter uh, part two. Although Hebrews is specifically addressed to Jewish Christians, its teachings and admonitions are equally important and applicable to all believers. In Christ, there is no difference uh, between Jew and Gentile, Colossians 3 and 11. In Christ, there is neither Greek nor Jew, circumcision nor uncircumcision, barbarian, Scythian, bond, nor free, but Christ is all and in all. And so, of course, we have just a lot of sections of Christianity who want to be hyphenated Christians. And that's what I, what I read right there. Um, apparently, some were Greek Christians. Some were, get this, Jewish Christians. Does that sound familiar? <laughs> right? Some were circumcised Christians, uh, uncircumcised Christians, barbarian Christians, Scythian Christians, black Christians, white Christians, uh, bond Christians, free Christians. Uh, have you ever heard of the saying, hey, this was just to the females or this was just to the males, you know, God, you know, um, hyphenated Christianity isn't really Christianity at all. All and Paul, uh, the writer of Colossians, is, is saying, Listen, Christ is all and in all, that's your identity. But what I wanted to look at was that last sentence in that first paragraph that said, It was something new. The Christianity was not something to add on to anything, <laughs> to add on to Judaism. It was something new. And the writer of Ecclesiastes gives us the definition of new, doesn't he? He said there is nothing new under the sun. You know, we say, oh, I got a new pair of sneakers or uh, I got a new dress. I got a new, some new pants, a new suit, right? And, you know, it looks fresh. It looks clean. Smells good, right? But the writer said, no, that's, that's not new. Right, because it had to come from the factory and then that. But the writer said something, and I want you to get this. There's nothing new under the sun. But Paul said, We that have been born again, and you can look this up in Second Corinthians chapter five and verse seventeen, you are a new creature. Those who are in Christ are a new creature creature now how could he say that we were new creatures he's talking about the born again experience and if you remember when jesus said unless a man be born again he cannot enter he cannot see the kingdom of god do you remember that when jesus said that what was he saying because that word born again literally means born from above. Above what? Born from above the sun. This did not originate on earth. This Christianity, okay, originated above the sun. In heaven. In Christ. That's the origination of Christianity. We're called believers because we believe every word God says. This really is new. This is a new experience. I'm not talking about renovated. <laughs> We're not talking about remodeled. We're talking about the born again experience. By the spirit of God. And 
that really just caught my eye. When you're talking about new, it cannot originate with any religion here on earth. It has to come from above. If you really want that experience to be new. God bless you. God loves you. God smiles when he sees you.